Hi, my name is Jonathan Woolworth. Uh, I'm the president of CB Construction. We're here at the Snake River Canyon National Cemetery in Buell, Idaho. I grew up here in Twin Falls, Idaho. Played Little League Baseball, went all the way through high school here, and joined the U.S. Navy 11 days after graduation. I uh, went to basic training in Great Lakes, Illinois, and also did my schooling in Great Lakes at the Hospital Corpsman School there. Uh, after that, I was deployed and uh, was, was injured while I served. And didn't quite know what I was going to do, so I went to college, got a degree in business and risk management, and discovered that there was a service disabled veteran owned program that the government looks at, and got involved in learning how to bid projects and do projects with the Department of Veteran Affairs. And when this came up, it was the calling that I was looking for to come back to my community and give back to the community that shaped who I am today. So many people ask, why did we build a cemetery in a rural part of Idaho? And part of what the Department of Veteran Affairs and the National Cemetery Administration realize is the large cemeteries are great for a lot of our veterans who came from big cities and, and, and big metropolitan areas, but they realize a lot of our veterans come from rural communities to serve in our armed forces. And so they've made a big push in the last five or six years to do rural initiatives for smaller national cemeteries that aren't the grand size because they realize people come from all over our country to serve in the military. And they really want to serve those people in those communities by honoring those veterans. Um, they believe that every community should be proud of the veterans that served. And that's why they've pushed the initial uh, rural initiative one of the hardest things about working with the National Cemetery Administration is their high standard. They look at these as national shrines, as we would look at the Washington Monument, or the Lincoln Memorial, or the U.S. Arizona Memorial in Hawaii. They're very much looked at as a monument to our military members that served selflessly to our country. Oftentimes, they do their service in the quiet and no one knows what they did but this is a place that we can honor them and a lot of the veterans here are going to be from the magic valley in southern idaho this is different than a state ran veteran cemetery in that the state runs those cemeteries and they incur all the fees there whereas the national cemetery and the tax dollars pay to inter the national veterans here so where I'm standing now is the committal shelter, where most services in, in will be for uh, prior to the veteran being interred here at the National Cemetery. This facility you know, has four benches um, that hold roughly about 20 people, but we can accommodate probably about 50 to 60 people underneath the roof here. This facility will play the taps that everybody knows. It'll play that automatically for them and then allow the families to walk to where the final resting place for their loved ones will be. Uh, this is a pre-engineered metal building structure with structural steel holding it up, tongue and groove roof, and localized stone that comes from this region of Idaho. Also, we have a 550 unit crypt field. The traditional cemeteries that most people remember of going out there and somebody's digging a grave. The federal government has found a more efficient way is pre-digging concrete boxes in the ground where veterans can be laid to rest with their husband or wife and their headstones are on top um, six feet apart just like always. 550 vaults will hold roughly 1,100 uh, veterans and their families, so two people to a vault. We have a natural burial field here for veterans who do not prefer not to be buried in a vault. Um, it's dug the traditional way with a backhoe and uh, they're buried seven feet and four and a half feet, depending on if they were married or not married, so that way their spouse can also rest with them when they have passed. And then we have another section, that's about 200 uh, cremain plots for people who chose to be cremated but want to be buried here, that we have sites for them and they're buried three feet apart from one another. Uh, additional facilities that we have is a columbarium. Traditionally, most people would think of them as a mausoleum where the actual ashes of veterans go into and their loved ones can go in there as well and they'll have an inscripted granite stone with their service and date of birth and passing. And then we have a memorial wall that's, that's roughly about 100 units that allow people who are buried maybe outside of here who passed away in battle and they weren't recovered, they can go on the memorial wall for veterans and family members to remember them by. Uh, out of the eight acres that was developed here, we only touched on about three and a half of uh, the acres. 
So this is meant to be a building process and a growing monument to those veterans that served. So if you come out here and you see land that's not developed, knowing, wondering why, it's for future development, uh, the Department of Veteran Affairs expects to develop another section in about eight to 10 years when, or when capacity is required or, or needed. One of the other unique things at uh, every national cemetery is the Gettysburg Address that Abraham Lincoln wrote. The cast iron that it's actually cast from are two Battle of Gettysburg cannonballs and that's at every national cemetery. It is a historical monument with historical materials. Working with the National Cemetery Administration has shown me um, a, a great deal of appreciation for the, for the men and women that not only serve our country, but also the men and women that see to it that our veterans are placed in some of the most beautiful places in our country. These people work tirelessly behind the scenes with little notoriety. We really want to say thank you to all the contracting officers and engineers and agronomists and civil engineers that they employ that work tirelessly to develop and make sure these sites are a true honor to all those veterans. Uh, so I feel really honored that uh, I was able to come back to where I grew up and give something back. That was really important to us. The other part that really made me proud was we were able to serve a lot of small businesses here locally that did a lot of the road work and cement work and the rock work and the roofing. Um, that was really exciting because I didn't want to take the money out of the community. I wanted to keep as much of the money that the VA allocated for this project in the community because that's what we want to do is impact the communities that we serve in. And when you come out to the National Cemetery, understand you're standing on grounds of giants, of people who have served before us and laid down their lives so all of us could have the freedoms that we enjoy.